Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. We have a light-hearted show for you today, but we must start off on a serious note with this sombre message from His Majesty. And all our hearts go out to the people of Australia, and Sydney in particular, who have been affected by tragedy this week. Unspeakable, unimaginable tragedy. The King said, My wife and I were utterly shocked and horrified to hear the tragic stabbing incident in Bondi. Our hearts go out to the families and loved ones who have been so brutally killed during such a senseless attack. While details of these shocking circumstances are still emerging, our thoughts are also with those who are involved in the response, and we give thanks for the bravery of the first responders and emergency services. And there is also a message from the Prince and Princess of Wales who said, we're shocked by the terrible events in Sydney earlier today. Our thoughts are with all those affected, including the loved ones of those lost and the heroic emergency responders who risked their own lives to save others. W and C. They are unfortunate initials, aren't they? It has to be said. And that is one of the arguments uh, for using Kate, actually. At least then they would be WK rather than WC. You can't really avoid it. But, you know, I'm digressing and not trying to detract from the seriousness of the messages, by the way. Um, truly awful. So many disturbed minds, aren't there, in the world? So many disturbed minds because we hear this man was suffering from a schizophrenic disorders of the mind and it seems to be ever ubiquitous doesn't it these problems anyway we're going to get off of that and onto more light-hearted subjects and a quick question or comment here rather from Janet Barker hi River you are going wild with the love of your pierced earrings River you are wild well thank you yes I have been enjoying wearing my earrings haven't I since only having them pierced last year I used to have a nose piercing this side but I can't remember and I have had one ear done before but yes this is my first year of proper earring wearing and now they are I would say fully healed so yes I've been giving it the old razzle dazzle my dear and certainly enjoying it and actually it does give one a certain je ne sais quoi I feel when one is uh, out strolling and trotting and stomping the pavement do you understand I've always loved the soft glimmer of a little bit of something or other catching the light and you might recall that my favorite movie is Working Girl with Melanie Griffith and I channel that character a little bit more <laughs> than is probably healthy or try to she was a redhead was Tess McGill and I'm blonde but I've always adored that scene I've got a head for business and a body for sin well, I'm the same, except I haven't really got a head for business. But I always enjoyed the soft glimmer of that cocktail dress, the black that's studded with the little diamante adornments. And she had a little sort of light catcher here, and maybe they were pearls or diamond to the ear, but just a little soft little ping, ping, ping for the gentleman, you know, to catch the gentleman's eye and just subtly, softly glimmer and shimmer. Do you see my... <laughs> I'm, I'm going off my dear this is where this is where I dwell in my mind it's terrible in my mind I'm in an 80s cocktail bar in Manhattan in a diamond studded dress and my name is Tess McGill <laughs> and I've got a head for business and a body for sin well I'm halfway there so yeah I'm digressing aren't I my dear but I do like earrings and I have been wearing a lot of them that was the point I was going to say because um, I get, as you know, many of my earrings from the charity shops, the second hand, vintage and yada yada yada. But if I do go to the high street, uh, one place that I've discovered, which people here in the kingdom might know, I didn't know about it, was a place called Lovisa. I thought it was actually Louisa. <laughs> I've been calling it Louisa. But when I looked it up on the internet, it's Lovisa, I think. I think. Probably be wrong again. But Lovisa. And you get some great bargains in there. You can go in there and fill your boots, my dear. Some of them are three pounds. There always seems to be a sale on and you can just fill your boots for three pounds, seven pounds. And some of them are quite fancy. The only thing that's a bit of a problem for me is that many of them are gold based and I prefer silver metal, if you will. A silver finish rather than gold. It's a bit more versatile for me, but they do have plenty of silver as well. Uh, I think these ones were from there by memory, uh, very shiny and you can get all sorts of things there so that's my recommendation you know and I don't recommend often you know that my dear 
especially if I'm not being paid for it, but I recommended this just like I recommended HG Lime Scale Remover a couple of months ago. And I was so delighted to get messages from those of you who tried it out and who also agreed with the HG cleaning product range. <laughs> Hardly glamorous, but it's really practical and it works. Their lime scale removal works. It melts off lime scale. And I was so delighted when I got messages from you telling me, thank you ever so much. I've had the same problems for years. I haven't been able to remove the lime scale off of my shower screen. And exactly as you said, it just melted off. It honestly thrills me more than just <laughs> anything else you can say, because it's about those little things that bring a little sense of convenience to our day and a good value, isn't it, my dear, as well? A good bargain. So, someone who need never sully their hands with a pair of marigolds and lime scale remover by HG or otherwise is the Duchess of Sussex. And the Duke of Sussex, of course, born with a silver spoon and will die playing the spoons. Um, polo. All the talk is polo, isn't it, my dear? In Wellington, Florida, they've been bringing their glamour to a charity polo match close to Miami and seal it with a kiss. <laughs> Don't slip me a tongue, Harry. Oh, oh. The word succubus comes to mind as they suck each other's faces. Don't you think, my dear? Succubi in the house. Beware, beware, like dementors sucking the soul out of each other's system. Well, they can suck salt. They can suck salt. Now, a lot of people have been asking why the masses are going to take an interest into polo, because this is their new Netflixing adventure, isn't it? Because it's an elite sport and it is, you know, equestrian society. Well, my dear, I beg to differ. Um, I'm not saying that the show is going to be a success, but there is certainly potential for success if they play it right. And I think what they're doing this week is, in a way, playing it right, because they are... They're lacing it, they're lubricating people's feeling for the atmosphere of the polo. Do you see, my dear? It's the same reason, you know, you ask why people take an interest. It's the same reason why the likes of Dallas and Dynasty or Dynasty were hits in the 80s, my dear. It wasn't that everybody else was rich and lived in a big ranch like such as South Fork or swung around like Joan Collins. But, uh, Alexis Carrington Colby Dexter, I should say. But, it was escapism. It was fantasy. It was, uh, you know, those uh, typical housewives, the bored ones that rush to buy Fifty Shades of Grey in the next instalment. Ooh, and have a fiddle uh, and dream of something else. It's that kind of escapism, my dear, isn't it? Fantasy. Fantasy! And all the strapping, uh, sweating gentlemen and the elegant ladies trotting around with what they think is uh, how things play out in the world of polo. Could be seductive. It's the same reason Jilly Cooper, who I often mention, and her novels took off so much, isn't it, my dear? Same kind of thing. Riders, rivals, the man who made husbands jealous. Of course, the reality is quite different, as I've told you before. Uh, there are glamorous moments in polo, for sure, especially when the uh, tournaments are at, at hand, but it's mainly about networking and chilling with friends and building relationships and having barbecues, this kind of thing, my dear. In fact, I told you exclusively a few months ago, and this was exclusively revealed to you, with the help and information and the whisper of a, a regular and uh, very highly regarded and connected viewer of this channel, and you know who you are, my dear. I exclusively shared the whisper to you that Harry was invited to the Polo Club Dusseldorf when he was there for the Invictus Games last year, he was invited by that polo club and uh, his management responded saying that he would attend for a fee, a donation. Now you can make of that what you will. That was the, that was the premise that was believed. I don't know if it was spelt out exactly where the donation would go or if it would be some kind of half and half affair, but in the event, Polo Club Dusseldorf declined. They declined to make that donation. They'd invited him along as a spectator, not as a, as a player. But it was declined because Harry is actually, I'm told by those in the know, popular enough in the polo world. And my own friends and family are involved in that polo world. And I've never played because I'm useless on a horse. 
but I've been obviously to see the polo I find it rather boring apart from the sexy moments and the bubbly and the tournaments and this kind of thing I rather enjoy all that having good old gossip but I don't really enjoy the equestrian world that's more for my siblings when I came along I had other interests so I didn't really go horse riding at a young age and I think the younger you're into it the better you are at it and the more confidence you have with horses and I'm useless with horses I mean there's a few that I I have met and loved rather nice, including some very attractive, beautiful, magical silver horses on the, uh, the Holy Isle, just off the Isle of Arran. I'm digressing, but the horse that I was saddled with, quite literally, was a great big fat horse called Betsy, who hated me and I hated her. We hated each other's guts and uh, I was a little bit intimidated by her because by the time that I began beginner lessons for horse riding everybody else was already very capable at my age perhaps I was nine or ten when I started getting into it so in my beginners class I had to have the biggest horse because I was the tallest one there and the biggest horse Betsy was a bitch an absolute bitch and yes I was a little bit intimidated by her so it's not you know they can smell fear and she knew that I was afraid of her and I should have been more confident I know that and I accept that but she was still a bitch I'm sorry to take it personally she she grazed my leg up she pushed it against a uh, very how, what's the word to say spiky wall a spiky wall and mushed it along the wall <laughs> i've told you this tale before i know i have my idea but she mushed it against the wall and grazed it all up you know it tore up my jeans she did it on purpose out of spite and uh, you know i didn't like her but i was never cruel to her all i did was kept patting her all the time oh i love you betsy love you betsy let's be nice to each other betsy <clears throat> no she wasn't having it dear against the wall and animals usually all adore me by the way it's not as if animals take a dislike to me they don't betsy couldn't bear it it was jealousy, I think, my dear. But what I'm telling you is that I have, didn't have a natural aptitude for it, so I don't play, and I wouldn't play polo, you know, games for the boys. Uh, I'm there to sit the bubbly, my dear. But those who do have an affinity for it, and those who do get involved into that world, uh, like Harry, but as my whisperer told me, who is very au okay in that world, Megan, not so popular, not so popular, because she made a great big fuss, allegedly, after a groom tried to take a photograph of her, or so she said. And uh, she also made lots of requests about security that didn't go down well. And this, I'm talking about the polo world in Santa Barbara now, or their neck of the woods anyway. Didn't go down well, some of her requests, I'm afraid. Too precious, too grand. And as for a groom taking a photograph of her, I can't imagine grooms doing that uh, without permission. Uh, I think it's more like they were simply had their phone out and were generically taking photos because grooms are considered beloved members of the polo playing community. I mean, look at Sasha Walpole. She got rooted uh, by a prince. Um, I'm not saying that that was a great favour that the Prince did her. It was Sasha Walpole that did Prince Harry a favour, if you ask me, by riding that young... Uh, no, they're not bucks, are they? Uh, steed, I suppose you could say, or pony. Well, take your pick, my dear. But, OK, donkey. Let's say donkey. But uh, a mule. How about a mule or an ass? I think donkey might be a bit of an exaggeration, my dear. But... You know, it all goes on. All of the talk and all of the whispers go on, my dear. But Meghan was basking, basking in the Duke's alpha moment, wasn't she? Oh, he's been toddering around like the cock of the walk. He's the cock of the walk, this prince, isn't he? Toddering around. Now I've learned how to dress like cheesy nachos, Figuero. I'm now cheesy's twin, my bro. Oh, bro. I'm just going to totter it. He thinks she's the cock of the walk, this boy. And I must say, I do think that those photographs we've seen of him emerging from the gymnasium, they seem to be paying off. I don't think that he'll ever look like he paid attention on legs day. So I think he's always going to have that problem of being stockier up top and uh, more fragglish at the bottom half. 
but it has to be said there is a certain broadness to his physique that seems to be improving you know getting a bit broader up here and a bit more nipped in down there might be my imagination might be the slightly better dressing because he's been copying cheesy nachos as well uh, and getting into it but oh he is basking in it isn't he basking in the glory he's having his alpha moment and she is stroking the ego we don't like to think of what else she might be stroking my dear but she's certainly stroking his ego and he strokes hers Oof, the mind boggles doesn't it but he stormed to victory stormed to victory and she was flushed with pride or bronzer take your pick and uh, as for the gown she wore <laughs> okay that's over egging the pudding the dress that she wore my dear i'm afraid from some angles it's rather attractive from others it's as if she's being throttled with toilet paper isn't it my loves throttled with toilet paper draped in andrex toilet tissue <laughs> i will actually flash up a photograph that flashed up on social media that, that rather tickled me but this girl loves her creases doesn't she my dear she loves her non-iron creased numbers oh how modern very sunburnished very bronzed I don't really think that she has the neck for these kind of dresses. I do appreciate the simply styled hair, but I would have preferred it with a side party. This is actually the Heidi Merrick ginger dress in ivory and the Heidi Merrick Santa Barbara sunglasses. The nude pumps were by Aquasura. And the name of this affair was the Royal Salute Polo Challenge. And I must admit, that I bristled somewhat when I saw this in the background, royal. How is he getting away with pairing the word royal? With his unroyal frame, well, it's to benefit Centre Bali. And uh, Royal Salute is the sponsor, it is the sponsor of this particular affair. Royal Salute being a Scotch whisky. And I had a quick look on their website and they named some of their recipes after various royal affiliations, if you will, the Kensington, the Mayfair, and they have one creation called the Sussex. The Sussex, and I took a look at the ingredients list, and actually it's got two of my favorite ingredients or tastes, smells in it. I wouldn't mind having a little sip, I'm sad to say. One being maraschino liqueur, mm, maraschino cherry. Oh, I do love cherry. And pear syrup, well, you know, my dear, pear is the emblematic fruit of this very broadcast, my dear, in the entire fruit basket. I love pear, I love pear. It's, so it's got cherry, it's got pear, and this I think must represent Harry, a thin slice of red chili. <laughs> you know that they put that in there to represent Harry, don't you, my dear? A thin slice of red chili, which only leaves uh, lemon juice for Megan. Must be lemon juice because it makes you scrunch up your face and with its sourness and she's working with lemonada, isn't she, my dear? Sour lemon. But she's got the gift of taking all those lemons and turning it into lemonade, hasn't she, my dear, at the lemonade stand of American Riviera Orchard. And what they are doing, my dear, can you not see it as plain as the nose on my face, is to establish a new court, a new royal court in Montecito in the confines of Santa Barbara in America. The Royal Court of America. This is what they're establishing, my dear. American Royal Orchard. Have no mistake about it. That is what she really wants to call her. Grove. And she is allowing the press to become familiarised with a new Duchess. Hugs. Affection. And, oh, my hand can't help but notice the broadness of cheesy nachos oh so broad i couldn't help my hand just feeling the ripple of his round shoulder are you getting this down jilly cooper i'm dictating to you for your next novel uh, the ripple of his broad shoulder and that jetty hair compared to my husband's auburn dandelion fair <laughs> remember my dears nothing is by accident and all is contrived in the world of miss rachel ragland so if she is allowing the world's press to get a glimpse of that touch through the chest, the look in the eye, the hugs to wifey and the children they share.
then it is because that is what she wants to allow and is what she wants to be seen because remember what takes precedence shape the narrative control the story and vice versa shaping and controlling laying it down from the word go and spicing things up so that when harry's polo series is released the whole world is clamoring and champing at the bit for excitement and drama and gossip what you see before you is them introducing cast members of their new telly show this is what you are seeing and part of me thinks that it's genius give ari emmanuel a gold star i've been rachel i've been megan i've even been diana but now i'm the new delphina and of course there's been a lot of talk in the press about whether or not megan dissed the chair of Centre Bali, Dr. Sophie Chandwaka, MBE, and some quarters of being accusing her of being rather rude when she took to the stand and Meghan took her away from Harry and ordered her <laughs> to stand next to her in the middle. Well, I'm actually holding judgment. I actually don't like to tread into the same territory that people tread with Catherine and come out with all kinds of crazy rumours which might not be true so I can certainly see uh, that Megan was taking control possibly showing her bossy britches side but at the same time I can also see the argument that perhaps she was trying to make the lady the centre of attention and bring her into the centre of the group where the other gals were and position her in the centre of the trophy because arms were in the way so did she do it in a brash style from what we can see she was rather brash and a little bit gauche and she doesn't do things with an elegant hand. This is what doesn't behoove her. And I think it comes down to her, what I see as her histrionic temperament. And you know those kind of characters, even when they're trying to be kind and concerned, it can come across rather brash and quite sharp. I think to be kind and to give some benefit of the doubt, I think she was trying to show warmth. And in the case of the Duchess of Sussex, that is rather like striking a match in an igloo, but she can but try. That said, it was not lost on me, the fact that this, this doctor, this Dr. Sophie, was more curvaceous than Megan, was possessed of more natural glamour and radiance than Megan. And uh, so in some ways you could say perhaps there was a touch of jealousy. Would she steal Harry's eye if she was to stand next to him? On the other end of the lollipop, one has to applaud Meghan for daring to stand the woman next to her because the woman is far more elegant than Meghan and is presented in a way that is easier on the eye and she dares to put, place her right next to her. So. It can be viewed in a number of ways. A little update on our beloved agent High Heels, Angela Kelly. Her new abode has been revealed by the national press, which is rather naughty. And you'll have to take my word for it when I say that I would not broadcast this photograph because I think it is an infringement on her privacy, actually, if it weren't for the fact that it's already been splashed everywhere all over the national press this week. So I'm really not betraying any confidences or telling you anything you probably don't already know. But... You might recall she was asked to leave her grade two listed cottage at Windsor and she's now living in a rather sweet looking three bedroomed bungalow in Yorkshire with gorgeous views apparently. We're told that it was £465,000 and it was purchased for Angela Kelly by the King, which is really rather sweet and rather kind, isn't it? A home for life, for life. And then the property reverts to the crown when Miss Kelly expires. But wonderful in the Peak District, Agent High Hills has wonderful views and wonderful memories of her time with the Queen. And we all send you our love, dear Angela, don't we, my dears? We send Agent High Hills our love and fond regards. Now, on to the subject of Edward and the Duke of Kent, the Duke of Edinburgh and the Duke of Kent. Today is a very historic day in royal circles, my dear, the 14th of April, because the Duke of Kent is, I was going to say, is to retire by the time of this broadcast. He has retired 
as Colonel of the Scots Guard after a tenureship of 50 years. 50 years. And this is after 20 odd years of military service. And now, at the age of 88, he has handed over the colonelcy to the Duke of Edinburgh. After a final annual day of Remembrance Sunday, which was today, today was Black Sunday for fallen members of the regiment. And to illustrate how highly regarded he is and was, remember he was the only person that was invited to stand with the late Queen Elizabeth II on the balcony at Buckingham Palace to take the salute for her Platinum Jubilee. Do you remember that, my dear? And so it should be. The Duke of Kent said that serving as Colonel of the Scots Guard since 1974, the longest anyone has spent in this role, has been a true honour and one which will forever fill me with great joy. Through those years, I've seen the work of the Scots Guards during peacetime and war and witnessed their bravery, selfless courage and devotion to duty. To my fellow Scots Guardsmen, I'm immensely proud to have served you all. I'm delighted that His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh will continue to champion all that you do and work towards preserving your great legacy. A very emotional day for the Duke of Kent, one would think. A very emotional day handing these reins over and much more pressure on Prince Edward. Poor Edward being left with roll after roll after roll heaped upon him and more patronages and as we all know, my dear, it would be a different story if Andrew was still in the picture, and of course Prince Harry, if his priorities had been a little bit more squarely aligned, because they had history with the armed forces as well. Edward does not. Edward dropped out of training for the Royal Marines in favour of performing arts. <laughs> and I approve of that, I approve of that, but there is something about members of the royal family taking on royal affiliations. If they themselves have served, there is a certain different quality to the way that they can look their fellow comrades in the eye. Do you understand, my dear? A little chink more authenticity and knowledge in the twinkle. Not to say that Edward won't do a fabulous job and be just as good as it, because he would and he will. This is Edward talking about. He's sterling. I'm just saying that it is the sort of role that could have been differently distributed had circumstances been rather different. But the Duke of Kent was actually appointed to his tenureship as the colonel 50 years ago after a 21-year military career. But he remains Royal Colonel of the 1st Battalion, the Rifles, the Honorary Air Chief Marshal of the RAF, and Colonel-in-Chief of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. So he's still a very busy bee with a lot on his hands at the age of 88. Prince Edward said, The Duke of Kent has been an extraordinary Colonel of the Scots Guards. Quite apart from his depth of knowledge and keen understanding of the regiment and all those who serve, past and present, he has been a tireless and passionate advocate. It's a distinct honour to be asked and entrusted by His Majesty to serve as the next Colonel. However, I accept with a degree of trepidation as I will undoubtedly be measured against the formidable record and reputation of my predecessor. I can only promise to do my best. We know you will, my dear Eddie, we know you will. And the regimental lieutenant colonel had some very nice words to say about the departing Duke of Kent. He said, he is the only colonel most of us have known. He has been a constant in a rapidly changing world. His loyalty to the regiment and selfless commitment to the country has been an example to us all. The regiment is delighted that His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh will shortly become the 27th Colonel of the Scots Guards. This is a seminal moment for us. It marks the end of a remarkable era and the start of a new and exciting chapter in our long and distinguished history. So Edward is the 27th, the Duke of Kent was the 26th, the 25th, the one before the Duke of Kent over 50 years ago was actually a Prince Henry. Yes, another Prince Henry, my dear, Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester, who was the only prince to ever hold that post, by the way, that particular post, and he was the son of King George V and Queen Mary, and he was Colonel from 1937 to 1974 when the Duke of Kent took over. Quite something, isn't it? So that is the Colonel of the Regiment, but do bear in mind, my dear, that the Colonel-in-Chief remains His Majesty the King. 
And somebody that is fabulous with horses is our Zara. And she was competing at the Burnham Market Horse Trials in Norfolk. She was photographed all through the week there. And on this occasion, she was wearing navy blue and white on her gelding and a variety of horses, actually. But this particular gelding we've mentioned before because it has the most marvellous name, a class of fur. A class of fur. That's a great name, Harry. Let's take it for your polo show. A class affair, because I'm classy. And so is Nachos Figueres, my darling cheesy nachos. I, I mean, you, Harry, my darling Duke, of course. <laughs> I was distracted for a moment. Past the smelling salts. <laughs> a classy affair with my husband. I think the word you're looking for, Megan dear, is brassy rather than classy. A brassy affair. With that brass, where there's muck, there's brass, my dear. Anyway, I thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Drop in again. Leave me a lovely comment. And if you care to treat me to something nice for Sunday service, my tip jar is in the description box. Ta-ra, my dears. And toodaloo.